first thing we need to do is remove all the screws off the back of the set. So you're going to find all these screws across here and we're going to need to be removed. Now we've removed all the screws, we can go ahead and pull the lamp door off and it just slides right out. Next, before we pull it apart, we can remove the lamp. You should just have one screw at the top. And we can go ahead and just gently pull the lamp out. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do this when the lamp is cool. Okay, now we've got all the screws out, we can go ahead and pull off this metal back piece and it should just slide out. And pass the power cord through and then out it comes. First things we're going to do are remove the connections on the optical block. There's a couple of connections on the optical block that we need to take out. We have the flat ribbon cable, the power connector, and then on the, uh, the chassis side where the pass play is, we have two connections. One down at the bottom that goes to the main, and then the power connector that goes to the ballast at the top. Once all those are removed, we can go ahead and undo the two screws on the bottom of the optical block, and then it should slide right out. Okay, so now we've taken out those four connections, we're able to go ahead and undo the screws and then the optical block will come out. Okay, so we've removed the optical engine from the TV and this allows us to access the color wheel and we have to get this plate off, which is on the bottom of the optical engine. So the first thing we need to do is remove the four screws, one here, here, there, and there. We're also gonna need to cut this tape on top that holds it in place. We're just gonna take a little razor blade and be careful not to cut for any wires. And just trim through that just to make it loose. There we go. And pull that off. Now we can go ahead and take those screws out. This plate should come away. There we go. And then here we can see our color wheel. Okay, so before we can remove the color wheel, we're gonna have to take off the DMD or formatter board so we can get to a couple of connections on the back. First thing we need to do is remove these connections right here. So we're just gonna pull that one out and pull the tape off, get that out of the way. We're also going to undo the fan right here on the front. Now that we've done that, we can start to pop off the metal housing that holds the fan. 
and there's a couple of little tabs on top and you can either try and lift them up with your finger or just kind of pop a screwdriver underneath and push them forwards and there's also one over on this side once you pop those it should just have a little wiggle and it should pop free it can be a little tricky sometimes but there we have the fan and the housing that can go way to one side and also want to remove this last connection right here so now we have all the connections off the board and the fan removed we can start removing the screws so you don't need to remove all the screws at this point you can just focus on these here that can have the larger oval and remove those first some of these if you've never done this before are going to have an epoxy in there that's going to be pretty hard to remove so it might be a little tough you can either chip it off or scrape it off or try and cut through it with a razor just be careful with the board Now we've got this loose, you can go ahead and I'll turn this around so you can see, hopefully, that you have a couple of connections that go into the back of the boards. You want to be really careful at this point. You've got to try and reach in. The top one you need to pinch and it should just come out. This bottom one you can just gently pull and it comes straight out. The top one has a little locking tab that you need to squeeze to get it out. You can kind of see it there. Once you've done that, your DMD board is free. And we've also can pull those connections right out there. And those go off to our color wheel. So now we can turn it over and start accessing the color wheel. So I've got this open, we can just look at how the color wheel works and where it sits inside the optical block. Right here is where your lamp sits. It shines through a little window at the bottom and it shines through the color wheel. And then goes through, bounces off, the formatter board and a DMD chip and then back up through the optics to create the image. The color wheel is synced so it knows what color is, filter is currently available by the DMD board. It uses this to generate all the colors on your screen. Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove the color wheel. We're going to have to remove three screws. There's one here, here, and another one kind of further down. Now just go ahead and gently bring out the color wheel and it should slide right out. And now we have our color wheel. And as you can see by this one, if you spin it, it stops pretty quickly. If they're good, they should keep spinning for quite a long time, even with a little spin. If you try this trick, just make sure that you're touching the edge and that you're very careful. This is glass and it's easy to break. And you also don't want to get fingerprints on it. But there you go, now we can get our replacement and drop it in place and then reassemble. So we have our replacement color wheel and now we have to go put it back in. Just need to be careful, we have the screw holes and you also have these little holes right here that line up with uh, little bumps on the housing. So you want to make sure you line all these up, it can be a little tricky sometimes. Also want to make sure we don't hit the color wheel or anything because we do this. There we go. So it's in place and it kind of holds itself in. And you can grab your screws. Alright, there we go. Now we have the killer wheel back in place and we can go ahead and start to reassemble. Okay, so now we've got the color wheel in. Let's so make sure that you put those wires kind of back where they were. It should be right down along the bottom like that. Then we can go ahead and start to reassemble. We're going to put our cover back on. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put the housing on. And you want to make sure that you lift these wires up out of the way when you do it. If you get any behind, it won't sit correctly. And it just kind of clicks on. I can go ahead and put the screws back in. Okay, 
Okay, now we got the screws back in, we can go ahead and just kind of wrap these wires back around and they kind of zigzag back and forth, which just helps to keep them all in place. And this one has a little tape on the side too, you might need to undo. Keep winding them back and forth until they all start to lock in. And put them back into that tape. Alright, now we go. Now I can flip it back over and reinsert the DMD board. Alright, so if you've got the color wheel incorrectly and the wires are added just right, you'll see there's a little channel here and they should all fit through that. You want to make sure that these are not uh, caught anywhere. If you have any trapped wires and you crush them, it can cause problems, it can cause shorts, intermittent issues, a whole bunch of fun stuff. So what we're going to do is take our ribbon cable, slide it through this first hole, and do the same with this one. Slide them right through. And then we're going to take a special tool. We've uh, taken a wire tie, bent the end, and this will allow us to get in here and hopefully look through our cables like so. We've got one ounce. Uh, try to take a second one. And take a little wire hook again, reach in, pull it up through the hole, and there we go. So now we have those two through the hole, and this is the easiest way I found so far to attach this to kind of have the board up at an angle and then try and attach them from here. Okay, so here you can see the cables are back in place. The one on the left only goes in one way. The one on the right, however, can go in both ways. You want to make sure that you get it the right way up. And on this one, play out a little so you can see the metal faces up in this direction. If you get it the wrong way around, it's not going to function. You're going to find that your TV will start to boot up, then it's going to fail and blink an error code. This is because it's not controlling the color wheel. And when that doesn't happen, the TV won't start. Okay, so now we can go ahead and reinstall the formatter board. So we can go and put our screws back in. And what I would do when you put it back in, just have the screws loose, don't tighten them all the way down because when you put it back into the TV, most likely you're going to need to make some adjustments. So by leaving those screws loose, you'll find that you can actually move this board around separate from the optical engine. This allows you to adjust the picture on screen, so if you find it's off to one side or it's canted at all, you can adjust that. Once you have it set up correctly, you can then screw these down tight and it will lock it in place. Now we can go ahead and put our cover back on, so it should slide right on and kind of click down and into place and just tie that down. And we can go ahead and reattach the fan cable. And this will only go into one of these, it's nice. You can't put it in the wrong hole by mistake. And there's the other fan. And lastly, this one comes around, clips in. And you can do the little wire lock back up here too. Make sure it doesn't go back over the lens. Now we can go ahead and put this back into the TV. Okay, so now we're going to replace our optical block in the TV. And when we do this, there's a few connections we need to be aware of. We have one that's up on top of the power supply that provides power to the ballast. And we have a couple of power connections and uh, control connections here for the, the DMD board 
and go into the main board. We also have this, which is the video signal from the main to the DMD board. And we have this one, which provides power to the DMD board. So we're gonna put in our first connection here. And this one's a little bit fiddly, but holding the other wires up out of the way will help. Push it in until it kind of clicks. And you can go ahead and slide your optical block in. Keep those wires up and out of the way. Next up, you can take this power connector. This one goes up to the power supply. We next have this one right here. And it's going to connect to the formatter board. And lastly, we have the uh, video connection. So this one, you need to make sure that you do have the right way around. The shiny side, or the side with the little teeth on there, is going to point to the left. So we need to turn the tape a little bit and push it up and in. And it should click in when it's in place and lock in place. And there we go. Okay, next we're going to put in the T screws to hold the optical block in. There's going to be one right in here and one right in here. So it's going to stop it sliding around if you move it or so losing focus. Okay, so next up we're going to reinstall our lamp. Let's go ahead and slide it in place. And it'll kind of click in when it makes the connection with the power cord. And go ahead and take your screwdriver and just snug that screw down to lock it in place. Okay, so we have our back. I mean, you, the first thing we need to do is take our power cord and just pass it through the hole over here. Just be careful of the edges. Sometimes they can be a little bit sharp and they can either catch you or the power cable, neither of which is good. Once you have that done, you want to make sure that this metal piece right here sits on the other side of this plastic. If you don't, the back will not go on. Once you've got it on that side, go ahead and push it in place and you'll see that there's little plastic pegs that should line up in each corner. Once that's done, you can go ahead and start putting screws in. And there we go, we've put the back back on. Okay, so now we gotta put the lamp cover back on and I just realized that I actually put the screws in right here that actually hold the lamp cover in place. So I just undid those. Now we can put our lamp cover in. One of the things with the lamp cover, there's a couple of plastic tabs right here. They're gonna slide right into these holes. So you're gonna need to make sure you slide those in first. And it allows that to go over and lock in place. I'm going to take our two screws and put those in. And there we go. We have the back cover on the TV. Thank you for watching one of our many tutorials here at ShopJimmy.com. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends and help us spread the savings.